So very good afternoon to one and all. This is Dr. Pranay Dutte, and today we are going to discuss about the concept of sedimentary geology. So uh, this is a part of your paper, geochemistry and sedimentology. So we already discussed about the sub. So sedimentary geology is a concept. Uh, sedimentary geology is a combination. Sedimentology plus stratigraphy is the sedimentary geology. Why we are talking about the stratigraphy? Because whatever the uh, layers you can find in a, a deposition sequence, like. Uh, you have a uh, Vindhyan, Kalappa, and all these. Um, these mostly are the basins, and they stratigraphically deposited. They stratigraphically deposited, and after the deposition, stratigraphically deposited, they are going to. Uh, they are going to. Re, uh, given the idea about how they are, uh, how they are looks like, or how they are respond to the any process. So now, uh, what is the definition of stratigraphy, uh, sedimentology? Uh, sedimentology is the study of process. Sedimentology is the study of process that is the production, composition, transport, and deposition of the sediment. Sedimentology is the study of process that is the production, composition, transport, and deposition of the sediment. Whereas stratigraphy is the study of responses. Stratigraphy is the study of responses that is inferring the control on the spatial and temporal changes of strata. Exact process that created the rocks can't be known because only the other rocks are left, not the process. So what is the difference between sedimentology and stratigraphy? So sedimentology is the study of process, how the process has been uh, operating in the various part of the earth. Whereas stratigraphy, stratigraphy is the study of responses. Stratigraphy is the study of responses, which is the uh, known as the inferring the control on the spatial and temporal changes of the strata. Exact process that created the rocks can, can't be known because only the rocks are left, not the process. So sedimentation and sedimentary rock. So about the 75% of the rocks, about the 75% of the rocks exposed at the earth surface. About the seven, most of the part which is you have seen on the 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 most of the part which you can see on the earth is mostly a sedimentary origin. Mostly a, a sedimentary origin. So how the How the sedimentary or, uh, rocks are been, because the, you can see that what is the process behind the sedimentary rock? What is the process behind the uh, sedimentary rock? The sedimentary rock is formed by the weathering and uh, erosion, weathering, transportation, this activity. So this activity cannot be uh, uh, happen or cannot be operated inside the crust. It mostly occurred in a surficial part okay it mostly occur on a surficial part so uh, this is how you can this is how you can why you can have a, a more sedimentary rock exposed on the exposed on the earth okay so are the iron and more and groundwater record the earth history? So most of the fossil you can also find then what is the sediment? So sediment is having a loose sediment is a loose solid particle and can be terrigenous, biogenic and chemical. So when we are talking about the sediment, when we are uh, talking about the sediment, 
sediment is nothing but a loose solid particle loose uh, loose solid particle is known as the sediment okay then you have a terrigenous sediment then you have a terrigenous sediment so terrigenous sediment is a, a fragment from silicate a terrigenous sediment is a fragment from silicate which is having a igneous and metamorphic which having a igneous and uh, then you have a biogenic sediment a biogenic sediment are those sediment which having a fossil uh, which having a fossil and the chemical that is precipitate with the chemical sedimentary rock then you have evaporation that is precipitated and super saturation in a closed basin so you can classify the particle size you can classify the particle size that is boulder more than 256 mm then cobalt that is a 64 to 256 mm then pebbles you can have a 2 to 64 mm then you can have a sand that is one uh, um uh, one divided by 16 to 2 mm then you have a sealed and clay then grain size and grain shape depend on grain size and grain shape that is depend on transport media okay transport media that is a river which having a pebble uh, which is bounce on a river bottom and move in a uh, traction and sealed clay suspended in a water column so how the grain size and grain shape means you can have the sedimentary rock or you can have any grains uh, if you visit it to the river any river you can find a different grains you can find a different grains so that is uh, that grains are uh, transported meat that grains are depending upon the, the size of that grain is depending upon the which transported media they have used then distance from the parent rock okay then distance from the parent rock then mineral hardness and consider the sorting so the grain size and the grain shape the two important parameter grain size and grain shape two important parameter depending upon the what is the transport media whether it is a river it is whether it is a glacial whether it is a lake whether it is a wind so different transporting media giving you the different grain size also among the transported media also means in river you can see that if the grain is coming from only the two kilometer the size may be not uh, finer okay if the grain is uh, only coming from the two kilometer the grain size may not be that finer but if the uh, but if you are uh, if your grain is coming from the uh, two to two or more more than uh, two kilometer that is a five kilometer and all your grain size your grain size may be a, a different one your grain size may be a different one means a more finer so this is how the distance from the parent rock and transporting media will control the grain size parameter then mineral hardness then mineral hardness the harder the parent rock the longer it will be take to sediment or to erode example silicate are more resistance to weathering and erosion than feldspar and this is why beaches are often comprises of sand not feldspar rich sediment then the sorting sorting is a winds that sort well sorting is a winds that sort well glacier sort poorly there is a large spread of grain size in glacial deposit. Then you have a classification of sedimentary rock. Then you have a classification of sedimentary rock. So you have a detrital sedimentary rock. That is a mudstone, sandstone, conglomerate and glaciers. Then you have a detrital sedimentary rock. That is a, a classification. This is based on the particle size. Whereas the, this classification is based on the terrigenous input. So all detrital rock are class plastic. So what is the difference between plastic and non-plastic rock? A very basic difference. A plastic rock are those rock. A plastic rock are those rock which is having the uh, which uh, which transported from the which transported from the by the mechanical process. What that mechanical process are? The mechanical process are. Uh,
the mechanical process are uh, like you don't have a chemical involved in that process okay means pure physical processes like river can flow on the basis of their whatever the velocity they have and all then we have us a different kind of sedimentary rocks okay then we have a different sedimentary rocks so all about so already we discussed that 75 percent of the earth 75 percent of the earth is made up of the sedimentary rock is made up of the sediment rock because on the ocean floor you know that what is the uh, highest percent of uh, highest percent of spear or what kind of you know the 70 uh, sorry uh, 71 percent almost uh, covered by the oceanic surface so you have a more hydrosphere so in ocean the mostly the sediment can deposit it from the river when the river meet to the ocean and that all are the sedimentary rocks that all are the sedimentary rocks so most of the part of the oceanic crust is having a sedimentary origin because it act as a uh, basin to, uh, to take uh, all the sediment from the ocean uh, river then uh, sandstone particle then sandstone particle so one uh, uh, one has to 16 to 2 mm in diameter is all are the sandstone particle one one has to 16 one divided by 16 to 2 mm is in diameter is all are the sandstone then the practical uses of sandstone there is a building and reservoir for the fossil fuel there is a building and reservoir for fossil fuel and groundwater conglomerate and brecias grain diameter that is larger than 2 mm is known as the conglomerate and brecia how the conglomerate and brecia can be differentiated then so conglomerate is having a rounded grain conglomerate is having a rounded grain whereas brecia is having an angular grain conglomerate is having a rounded grain and brecia is having an angular grain what sedimentary rock do geologists recognize so geologists what is the work of geologists recognize the rock also and what is they have followed that is the two things in field. So detrital sedimentary rocks, the detrital sedimentary rock is a plastic texture classified by size and shape. Conglomerate bridge and sandstone uh, sandstone shape are common. Shape are common. then you have a, a detrital sedimentary rock okay so in detrital sedimentary rock conglomerate brecia sandstone sealstone shales are common then you have mudstone mudstone are more than half of all sedimentary rocks mudstone are more than half of all sedimentary rocks which contain the smallest particle which contain the smallest particle then you have an environment of deposition that is lakes, lagoon, deep ocean basin, your flood plain. That is a mudstone is mostly mudstone is mostly uh, deposited in lakes, lagoon where you have a calm environment. Okay, mudstone cannot form where you have a, a very uh, high energy environment. So it required a very calm and uh, a steep, steady environment to uh, to deposit this mudstone. Then environment of deposition, lakes, lagoon, deep ocean, basin, river, floodplain, that all are the environment of deposition. Color varies from color vary from shale, uh, represent a mineral composition. The practical uses of shale is bricks, ceramic, cement, and oil and shale. So that is the practical uses of shale. Then you have chemical sedimentary rock. Then you have a chemical sedimentary rock. So inorganic chemical sedimentary rock that is a limestone. Inorganic chemical sedimentary rock that is a limestone. Inorganic. The formation of this one, how is it form oleitic limestone to part through time. Then you have a sediment and sedimentary rock. 
then you have sediment and sedimentary rock the lithification the lithification is mostly uh, lithification is transforming sediment into the so what is the lithification okay now you have one term that always been uh, used uh, the one term is always been used uh, that is a uh, lithification so what is the lithification actually so uh, lithification is nothing but the a transformation lithification is what lithification is nothing but the a transformation of sedimentary uh, sediment okay transformation of sediment into the sedimentary rock transformation of the sediment into the sedimentary rock is known as the lithification so when you uh, anyone is called you as what is the lithification so lithification is involving all the lithification is involve all the concept of uh, what uh, compaction cementation transportation all this will be covered by the lithification processes so you have a compaction like reduction in pore space and volume that is your compaction then you have a cementation that is a what is the cementation cementation is reduction in pore space reduction in pore space and increase in a mechanical strength then you have common cementic agent uh, include the calcium calcite silica iron oxide so lithification is when you have a turning sediment into sedimentary rock that is your lithification then we have a diagenesis what is the diagenesis diagenesis is changes in a sediment due to the increase heat changes heat into the sedimentary so that is your lithification then you have a, a diagenesis on that you have a lithification okay so lithification is a compaction plus cementation lithification is a compaction plus cementation that is your lithification then diagenetic process then diagenetic process so what is the diagenetic process diagenetic process by which the weight of the overlying material reduce the volume of sedimentary body that is your diagenesis so uh So cementation and recrystallization. What is the cementation and what is the recrystallization? Cementation is precipitation of dissolved iron in the pore space. So cementation is a precipitation of dissolved uh, iron in the pore space. Then what is the uh, different things like you have a calcium carbonate, silica, iron compound. Okay, so this is a, a some cement we have used. So if there is a, a iron, your rocks will be looks like a uh, your rocks will be looks like a your what we can say the reddish color. If the silica is there, if the silica is there, you, your rock will be looks like your uh, what we can say the white color. So depending upon the uh, cement, what kind of cement they have been used, we can have a different kind of cementation material. Then we have a texture of rock. Then we have a texture of rock. So formed by the compaction and cementation of sediment particle. Formed by the compaction and cementation of sediment particle. Then the recrystallization of a certain unstable mineral into the new, more stable mineral. This happens primarily in carbonate. When you start with the carbonate mud, heat it up, then cool it is form a larger grain. Then what is the sediment and sedimentary rocks? So sediment is what we are talking about already.
तो आइस वाटर वाइट विंड कैन ऑल ट्रांसपोर्ट पार्टिकल ऑफ टू वेरियस साइज टू अनादर लोकेशन देन एब्रेशन एंड राउंडिंग एंड सॉर्टिंग सो दिस इज अ डिफरेंट सेडिमेंट एंड सेडिमेंटरी रॉक्स सो वी हैव डिफरेंट टाइप ऑफ सेडिमेंट वी हैव डिफरेंट टाइप ऑफ सेडिमेंट लाइक वी हैव डिट्राइटस सेडिमेंट केमिकल सेडिमेंट ओके ओशनिक सेडिमेंट देन यू हैव so this is a different kind of sediment we have then how the what is the history of sedimentary rock what is the history of sedimentary rock so sedimentary rock follow the law so law of superposition an important principle that is used to interpret sedimentary rock it stated that younger rock are deposited at the top and older one at the bottom so uh, i already explained this uh, concept to you that uh, what is the law of superposition law of superposition is nothing but the youngest is always on a top where is oldest always on a bottom obviously when you have a basinal area in basin when the sediment coming from the their catchment and all they are deposited uh, the first rock is deposited at the bottom whereas the later one will deposited on the top so like that you have a sequence like that you have a sequence of different deposition deposited rock so this is how you can have a, a different kind of this is how you can have a different kind of rocks in the depositional sequences then what is the reading the story in sedimentary rock how you can reading the story so you can determine you can determine the in what environment you can determine easily in what environment the rock has been deposited so means you have a different environment like marine environment you have a, a continental environment this is a two major type of environment again in the this um, continental environment you have a lake you have a fluvial environment you have alluvial environment and deltaic environment lagoonal and all these are the part of this continental environment then in marine also you have a shale neritic environment deep shale so this is a different kind of environment we have so now what is the concept of reading the story in the sedimentary rock the concept is when you have a sediment and when you have a specific sequence like a graded bedding a fining upward a coarsening upward whatever the uh, whatever the sequence you are looking for so that sequence tell you the story about in what uh, environment they are get deposited like you have something like delta is always having a fining upward or coarsening upward sequence river is having a fining upward or at the uh, in shell but river is also having a some different composition like you have a Uh, at different at the point bar different at the uh, your so different kind of situation different kind of condition different uh, time frame give you the uh, idea about in what environment they are get deposited okay so once you have a set parameter of the uh, so this is so you have a, some set parameter like the coarsening upward is only found in this this, this environment the graded bedding is only found in this environment when you have cross bedding means the change in the direction of the flow and all so this is a set parameter in addition to the basics of the this uh, all the sedimentary processes you can also apply your knowledge of basic and apply your some uh, uh, additional input of yourself that uh, you can think about that how it can be happen what is the different uh, because you all, when you are visited to the field you cannot get the ideal uh, you cannot get the ideal sequences when you are going to the field you cannot get the ideal sequences so therefore you have to apply, so the for the anomalous rocks and this one so anomalous rocks and anomalous condition you have to apply your knowledge in that way that is how you can have a sedimentary unit 
so this is a common geological environment we have so we have a continental and transitional environment what is the continental and transitional environment you can have a continent at the site uh, where we are all living that is your continent then uh, then we have a trans uh, transitional and marine environment then we have a transitional and marine environment then you have a continental environment then you have a continental environment then alluvial fan when you have a continental transitional marine environment subduction zone so what is subduction to zone you know that the subduction zone are the zone where your one plate is undergoes to the another one one plate is goes to the another one that is your subduction zone then you have a, a lake river swamp and cave deposit you have a lake river swamp and cave deposits that is your this environment then then what can you have a desert deposition that then what you have a desert deposition then you have a lagoon environment that is a, a continental shelf and deep marine deposition continental shelf and deep marine deposition that is your continental shelf so this is a different geological environment we have in addition to this also there is a, a different environment like uh, you have a lake lagoon and all and so there is a, a lots of environment which can so proceed your sediment according to their climatic condition so this is some of the location of sub 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 surface evaporites then come to the sedimentary structure what is the sediment is having a stratification in it sedimentary structure is having a stratification like sedimentary rocks are bedded or layered sedimentary rocks are bedded or layered because the agent of deposition carry different material at a different time so uh, sedimentary structure are the bedded or layered so first uh, property or first structure that is found or first uh, things you have to study in the sedimentary unit is the stratification what is the stratification stratification is nothing but the layering stratification is nothing but the layering of the rock strata stratification is nothing but the layering of the rock strata into the different units so sedimentary rock are bedded sedimentary rocks are bedded or layered because the agent of deposition carry different material at the different times different kind of stratification are indicative of different environment of sedimentation then we have a bedding uh, sedimentary beddings so bedding is the arrangement of sediment particle into the distinct layer the sedimentary particle bedding is a arrangement of sediment particle into the distinct layer there is a changes in sediment change bedding there is a changes in sediment change bedding changes in a transport energy changes bedding then you have a normally graded bedding what is the normally graded bedding and how it is we can have so normally graded bedding is a sedimentary layer so normally graded bedding is sedimentary layer that is a, in which the particle size varies gradually with the coarseness particle at the bottom inversely graded bed finds at the bottom so you have a normal graded bedding and inversely graded bedding that is the two sequence we have So I will explain you this concept in a using the whiteboard, please. so i will explain you what is the exactly the graded beddings are so now you can have this basin like structure okay this is a two basin i will explain you 
this one is a known as the this one this is a upgraded bidding this one is a inversely inversely graded bidding So graded bedding and inversely graded bedding. These are two different beddings we have. So in the graded bedding, what is what the things can be happen? Like you know that there is a, if there is a, any uh, sequence or rock or if you are having a lake or something like that, according to gravity condition, according to gravity condition, you are bolder. You are bolder. The, or the higher coarse sediment, you can say the coarse sediment rather than boulder, maybe some type or different coarse sand also. They are deposited first according to gravitational setting equation. Then you have a, a medium grade, then you have some medium grade, then you have a finer grade. So this is how you can have different grains. This is how you can have a different grains. Like you have then a very, very small grain here. Okay. So this is now a gradation, like from coarsening to the fining. Same in reverse in this one that is known as inversely. That is inverse means reverse graded bedding that courses at the top and finest at the bottom. In this, this sequence, the graded bedding, you have a coarse sediment, means you have a graded bedding, means you have a gradation. You have a gradation like coarse, medium, fine. So this is a gradation we have in this one. Okay. So this is now how, uh, this is what you can have a graded bedding like structure. This is how you can have a graded bedding like structure. Then, So this is what I already suggest you. What is the graded bedding? Okay, from coarsening to fining of wood, that is your graded bedding. Then the cross bedding. What is the cross bedding? Change in the river. Uh, river can change their path and something like that. That sedimentary layer deposited at an angle that is known as the cross bedding. Then you have some surface sedimentary feature like ripple mark and mud track. Ripple mark are small surface ridges produced when the water or wind flow over the sediment after the deposit. Mud tracks are occur. Mud tracks are occur when the occur on the top of the then development of the cross bedding. Development of the cross bedding. So this is how your cross bedding will be developed. This is how your cross bedding will be developed. <laughs> then we have a asymmetric and symmetrical ripple. Then we have a symmetrical and asymmetrical ripple. So symmetrical, uh, asymmetrical and symmetrical ripple is asymmetrical ripple when movement of the sand on water in a unidirection means in one side only. When there is a two side directional uh, process that is known as the symmetrical ripples. So this is how you can have a symmetrical and asymmetrical 
this is how you can have a symmetrical and asymmetrical cross bleeding then formation of coal from the swam deposit then we have a formation of swam coal from the swam deposit so you know that coal is a, a sedimentary unit a coal is a, a sedimentary unit core is a sedimentary unit which having a overlying marine sediment deposited during the rising sea level then you have overlying sediment bury lights so coal is deposited in a swampy basin or basin mostly coal is deposited on a swampy basin mostly so this is a different formation like you form we will discuss this in a very uh, in a separate lecture about how the coal is formed how the oolite is formed how the mud rack will form and this one so this is a uh, this is a, a sedimentary phases and we will just overview the sedimentary uh, uh, phases what is the sedimentary phases exactly so sedimentary phases is a sedimentary phases is the deposits of sediment that have distinctive physical that have distinctive physical chemical and biological attribute high energy deposit environment which are existent to the finer grain sediment that are deposited in a water phases are typically recognized by grain size sedimentary phases are uh, transgression uh, is sedimentary phases is a transition which is uh, nothing but the rise in a sea level, rise in a sea level relative to land, result in offshore phases being deposited over the near shore phases. Regression is fall in a sea, sea level. So we are also called as a shoreline will be uh, shifted to our land. That is a transgression when the shoreline gets shifted towards the ocean. Have a landward migration of shoreline that is you have a landward migration of shoreline this is graded breeding so this is the overview this is the overview of the sedimentary geology what is the sedimentary geology all about and uh, on each on each uh, what we can say the each topic you can have a separate lecture like how the coal is formed how the oolite is formed what is the phases, what is the depositional environment, what is the marine depositional environment. Each one is having a, some separate lecture, to require separate lecture to explain because this, all the topics cover a very large area, a large things. So this is what a sedimentary a sediment in a stream, uh, a sedimentary ore we study now. Okay, so this is all about the sedimentary uh, geology, sedimentary uh, overview of sedimentary environment. You have this 10 MCQ question. So, what is the shale? Shale is a refer to the drop form from which size of the material, whether it is a from sand size, plant remain, clay mineral, and carbonate. What is the answer? You may know that the shale is nothing but the form by the in a calm environment and it uh, form a mud stone. Uh, shale is formed from, from the, a very finer sediment. So, what is the finer sediment? Sand is finer or clay is finer? That is, you have to decide. Which of the biochemical sedimentary rock? Coal, shale, or concrete? And which one of the following does not associate with the sedimentary rock? fossil and all so this is so 
you can go and solve. Thank you for listening this one lecture. I uh, hope you understand the concept of this one well. So thank you for listening. Thank you.